Well, uh, what a day it's been here at Bronx Pride. Actually, I should say, very interesting thing happened today. My African-American daughter, Coco Rodriguez, called me up to wish me Happy Father's Day. That was the first Happy Father's Day I got at the age of 80. And then, second was the strangest. A guy on the train who was of some ethnicity, I'm not sure what, he could have been, he, was, he might have been Latino of some sort, but he asked me if he could take a picture of my button. And then he said Happy Father's Day to me. And then we had a conversation, we had a conversation about all sorts of things, but I thought it was funny because I guess he thought that maybe you were my wife, which I thought was funny because you're wearing a lesbian princess button. And then I remember he wanted to, and then he, I get, ended up giving him my card. Do you remember much of that? You were there, did you overhear it? Tell me yes. what I'm forgetting because I'm, I'm so punched out and tired You now. were talking about music. That I told him I had gone to my friend Michael and that you had been Well, you know, I just think it's too loud in real life. You know, they're better on the video than they are in real life, and it would make me deaf. So I sort of had to explain to him. But then he mentioned that he'd seen, was it Guns N' Roses? Yes. Guns N' Roses when he was in Japan. And I told him that I love Japanese music. And he seemed to be a little bit kind of hazy. Oh, no, he mentioned Radiohead. Now, I have one. Is it Radiohead or Radio Station? Is there an American band named Radiohead? Yes. You know, I might have gotten them mixed up with a Japanese band called Radio Station, and I love one video. But anyway, then, oh, I know them. There's one video I really love from 2000 or 2001. I haven't been able to find them since. So I think we were talking about different bands, you know? And uh, so that was a really, I ended up giving him my card, telling him to friend me on Facebook. And, uh, so then what happened, what else happened? Then we came out here, I got a ring with my name Randolph spelled on it. I told him when I go to South America, my friend Lee Vincent, when I changed my name to Randolph, R-E-N-D-O-L-F-E, he would always come over and say, oh. I go to Dominican Republic or South America, I'm gonna say Randolphe, but now I have it spelled out on a ring. And so people will obviously be able to remember Randolphe. What a beautiful, it's just so, I just, do I, do I look like a Randolphe? I remember a New York Times reporter, no, it wasn't New York Times, some reporter said to me in the early 60s, R-A-N-D-O-L-F-E, sounds like you're about to inherit a barony or something. You know, which I thought was very funny. Because it was kind of pretentious for a person when I was in my early 20s, Randolph. You know? And but as I got older, when I became a cloning activist, I was Randy Wicker's the gay activist, and when I became a cloning activist, I made sure it was R-E-N-D-O-L-F-E. So if you look up Randy Wicker, you find all this gay activism stuff. If you look up Randolph, R-E-N-D-O-L-F-E, in quotes, you'll find all my cloning stuff. So it was a way to keep my many identities from getting all mixed up. So uh, I'll say when you change your name, one thing I do advise that you keep the same first name. I, my name was Charles Gervin Hayden Jr. And then I changed my name even legally. I took I <laughs> meet Randy and they say, what is this all about? You know, you suddenly find yourself. So if you're gonna change your name, use the same first name or a very similar same first name. But that's just the name change. I changed my name legally in 1967. That would have made, made me uh, 29 years old when I got money. But I really felt Randolphe. Randolphe was really my real name because my day I was Charles Bourbon Hayden Jr. working some corporate job. But by night, I was Randolphe. The first gay militant, according to John D'Amelio. So anyway, I came up here, I actually bought this beautiful ring. And I bought a beautiful I Love New York t-shirt just like I needed another t-shirt from the Trevor Project, but that's a good cause. I think I gave them $20, but then I found out I, was, I think I underpaid them $5, but we had a nice chat anyway. And uh, 
I made some very interesting interviews with people, uh, including the Muslim man who I'm not sure he understood what I was talking about. By the way, go and pick up a Spanish edition of the Quran. They're out of the English traditions, and you'll be able to get one. It'll be interesting to have with someone my be interested. course great but God knows you know you have two minutes of the stage dancing I may have to cut that out because if you if you have some music on I mean I, I did a tour of the African American Museum in New York in uh, Washington DC 22 minute tour and I got a violation on YouTube because there was some music playing in the background while I'm talking about what we're looking at in the museum and which really annoyed me because you get three strikes in a year and you're out on YouTube and I have too much invested. So, no. It's just incredible how people they shout as they go by my dumb one. Unbelievable. People talk so loud. I hope the hope of that I'm showing up, the wind might be blowing, put it this way towards me. So anyway, I had a great time at Bronx Pride, putting up pictures and, and video. I'll have to do most of it on Flickr or YouTube because I can't really upload directly to Facebook right now. My iPhone doesn't connect right. I'll put it on Flickr and then link it all on YouTube. So look for the link on Flickr and I'll have a whole thing on Bronx Pride. So it's been a great day and I encourage everyone to come next year. It's really a lot of fun. So push the stop button.